morning, everyone. So today is our second sermon in our, or second service in our series of sermons and services based around the Olympic Games and the athletic imagery in the New Testament. The fourth week is going to actually be a service uh, which will be run by our Kids Zone kids uh, for our fourth one of our services. And we have a special guest coming who is really going to be worth coming along for to listen to for the fourth week of these, so a fortnight from now. And I'm not telling you who that is, you're going to have to come along. We're going to begin with our opening words, and then we're going to do something a little bit different, so you'll have to bear with me. So let's begin. From north and south, from east and west we come. God's people called to the table where simple grace nourishes us. From down the street to across town, from single households to apartment dwellers, God's people are called to community where we live and serve one another. From every class, from every race, every status, from little ones with sippy cups to elders with overflowing hearts. God's people are called to witness to God's hope, to offer peace to a shattered world. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For an athlete, the goal, the finish line is pretty easy to see, and the prize that they're after is, I think, just as obvious. But I think it's a little bit harder for us. So, Um, James said he didn't know when I was going to get a word in. Well, I decided to get less of a word in and ask some other people to help me with my message for this week. And um, I'm going to ask you to help after you've seen this. So go for it. In your opinion, what is the goal of the Christian faith? My goal would be to have eternal life with God. So the goal of the Christian faith, in my view, is one, to make sure we follow Christ with all our heart, and two, to make disciples and baptise other people into the Kingdom of God. Thank you. To be in relationship with Jesus. Well, for me, I think I... My answer would be similar to what Paul answered when he said in uh, 2 Timothy 4.7, uh, I have fought the good fight, I have uh, I've finished the race uh, and kept the faith. And, uh, and whatever that race is um, that God's marked out for us, it, um, it's not a race to heaven, but it's, uh, it's an analogy for um, the path that God has put us on. Um, my path here at the moment is a uh, senior pastor at the Dolby Baptist Church. But I'm a Christian first and foremost, and I want to be um, a witness for the Lord uh, in, in my community, in my family, in all aspects of life. Um, that's, that's my goal. God bless. The goal of the Christian faith is to uh, learn how to have our sins forgiven and gain eternal life with God and our Saviour Jesus and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. For me, the goal of the Christian faith is to follow Jesus' great commission, to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit baptising them into fullness of life and relationship with Jesus. And the second fond goal is to bless others. When we know God, we will automatically uh, know the works that he's created for us. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that we are God's workmanship, created for good works in Jesus Christ. So the goal is to know God and make disciples of him and to, um, uh, to live into the good works that God has created us for. Hi, I'm Mark Vanika. The goal of faith? Well, the goal of faith is to fall in love with God in Christ. God grants us faith in the waters of baptism, reminds us that he loves us, and that we can go then and share that love to others. So I'd say that the goal of faith is to fall in love with God in Christ, and then that show that love to others so that all may know him.
So many different answers. We need some more. What I need you to do now is just talk among yourselves, turn to someone near you and say, uh, and talk about this. What is the goal of the Christian faith, in your opinion? I'll give you two or three minutes, then I'm going to ask you another question. Just to throw a spanner into it for you, as I mentioned, when you're running a race like the 100 metres, the goal is the finish line, but for an Olympic athlete, that's not the prize. The prize is a gold medal. Is the prize that we are after different to the goal? So what is the goal of the Christian faith? We've looked at a little bit and what is the prize that we are wanting to win? There you go. Amongst yourselves. Is that different? What is the prize that we're aiming for? Well, there you go. We're going to look at that a little bit more as we go. I'm going to need you to listen closely to the reading. There's only one reading today and some of the answer is in there and we'll uh, look into what the Apostle Paul says about the goal and the prize of the Christian faith. But let's... um, pray our opening prayer together. Holy God, our source and our goal, you have made us to hunger and thirst for you. In your loving kindness, let us run towards what you have promised and share in your heavenly treasure. Amen. The reading for today comes from Philippians 3, verses 12 to 14. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll read again our text for this morning. It's pretty short from Philippians 3, 12 to 14. Not that I have already obtained all this or, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So how do we go? What is the goal of the Christian faith? Heard some good conversation flowing around. As you might have seen from the video, every answer was different. Sometimes I think if we can't sum up what we're wanting to do, that's the case when I write sermons, if I can't sum up where I'm wanting to do with this in one sentence, then I need to refine it a bit more as it might be moving around a bit much. But all of our answers are different. I guess you might have even heard that for with each other. Some of our answers were different. What is the goal of the Christian faith? It seems like it is so much easier uh, for the athletes I've been watching on TV. Years of single-minded dedication and diamond-hard focus to work so hard so they can get that one moment where a medal is placed around their neck and they hear their nation's anthem. And the thing that amazes me is that it could be a whole lifetime of work and then that moment might take two minutes to get that medal and hear the anthem and that's it. They have to live off that for the rest of their life. But that's what it is all about. What about us as Christians, the goal of our faith? Do we have a finish line or an end point we want to reach or something we can look back and say, hey, I've made it to there? Is it heaven? Is it eternal life? Is it God Himself? If you had asked me a week ago, I would have said, I wouldn't have thought about it very much, I might have said the goal of the Christian Christian faith is to get to heaven, eternal life, that's it, I would have said. And the people that I put on the video, most of them, I said, here's the question, here's the camera. I didn't give them much time to think about it. And that's for a reason. One or two did. All of the answers that I've heard, and we actually at McAllister this morning, we threw them around as a a big group. They were all different and they all have a lot of overlap though. And a lot of, and it all, there's no wrong answer, I don't think. They're all, all good things. And they've all been mentioned by those people on the video in different ways but I was amazed at the breadth of the answers. Some focus just on the life to come, on heaven and on our relationship with God, which is what I call the vertical element of the faith, you know, where the arrow goes up and down, it's about our relationship with God. That was what a lot of people concentrated on. Others focused more on letting others know about God in this life because of the relationship we have with God and they started talking this way, like what I call the horizontal element of the faith, where the arrow goes out to other people. And some talked about one flowing out of the other. So we heard eternal life, forgiveness of sins, the Great Commission, all important things, absolutely, and all correct. But what it did serve to do is to show me that perhaps the goal of the Christian faith is perhaps not as clearly defined as it is for an athlete. In a race, you run on towards the goal, the finish line, so you can win the prize. And when you can see the finish line, do you realise what a difference that makes? I remember, I was once at a year nine camp as a camp pastor, I went along with them and... um, This is a camp where in three days the kids had to do 20 kilometres on a mountain bike, 10 kilometres on foot carrying their tents and all that sort of thing, and then 20 kilometres by canoe. It was a lot of fun for some of us. The grumbling. By the time we got to the canoe leg with with the sore backsides from mountain bikes for kids that weren't used to it and the I'm tired and I'm sore and how much further is it? And the teachers on camp started calling it Toughen Up Princess Camp. And we were up um, near Lake Catharabar, up behind the Sunshine Coast. I don't know if you know where that one is. So we canoed through this saltwater creek, and that was fun. And the kids, I think, had this thought that around the next, very next corner, it might be home. That might be the end of it. And then we came out into the big saltwater lake, big shallow saltwater lake, and that was worse because you could see for miles, and in those miles was not home. You couldn't see the finish line. And they'd been already kind of, and then it got back down to, oh, oh, how long is it now? I don't want to do this. But eventually, you know, with a lot of pushing along and coaxing along, we kind of got to a certain distance where you could, we rounded a point and you could see the campsite. 
And I, I, I think I started laughing out loud at the difference it made. All of a sudden, these backs started bending so much harder and the paddles went in deeper and there was no more grumbling. The eyes were fixed on that beach below the campsite. That was the goal, clearly defined for them. Once the canoe went up on that sand, they were going to be fine. That was the goal because at that campsite was hot showers and hot food and comfort and that was the prize that they would get for reaching their goal. But what about us in our Christian journey, in our walk of faith? We can't see the finish line, can we? We can't see heaven from here, can we? We can't see God in the flesh as the disciples could when Jesus was standing right in front of them. So what do we look to? What's our goal? What is our prize? And I think that many people would say, and I've heard some people say already in the last few days, that the prize itself, not the goal necessarily, but the prize is heaven and eternal life. And I think sometimes we mix the two up. I think heaven's the goal, but it's not the prize. And I think that's the way that St Paul talked in our reading. If we look at verse 14 of our reading, he said, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So it's like God called me to heaven to get the prize. He doesn't talk like that's it, but he's been taken there so that he could get the prize. So often we talk about heaven like it is the prize of the faith, eternal life. It's like once we get through the pearly gates, that's it. Don't have to worry about anything else anymore. But why would we want to be there? Who is there that we would want to be there with? If we say that heaven is the prize of the faith, then we are saying, it's like saying that we believe in God so that we can get His stuff. That we believe in God so that He'll give us something good. And people almost talk like God doesn't matter then. Once we get to heaven, it doesn't matter. You know, and people say, what are we going to do in heaven? Is it going to be boring being there somewhere forever? So I think if we think like that, we're forgetting about why it's heaven. We, don't, we shouldn't talk about God like He gives us a reward for believing in Him, like, you know, a good child gets a cookie for doing the right thing. Oh, good, you believe in me, here, have a prize. Because when you start thinking about what heaven is, what is the definition of heaven for me? I mean, I read something the other day where the first Soviet cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin, when he went up into space, he came down again, and afterwards, the Russians, full of pride over what they've done, the President Khrushchev said, well, we went up into space and didn't encounter God. They literally thought that once you, you know, everyone says heaven is up because Jesus went up in a cloud, so once you go above the atmosphere, if you don't see heaven, it mustn't exist. They thought it like it was a place up there and God was in a place up there, but is heaven a physical place? I think by its very definition, heaven is is outside of space and time. When we talk about eternal life, I think we need to be careful because eternal life without God, isn't that hell? Being forever in a state of not being with God. I think we need to say eternal life with God is a bit different and that's for me the concept of what heaven is, it's being in the presence of our God forever and don't we practice that when we come to worship, when we notice that God is around us all the time? We're practicing being in His presence so that one day we can be there with Him completely. Have you seen some of the movies where people are immortal on earth and they think it's a wonderful thing, they think it's the best prize ever and after a while they realise that it is torture without end? I think that's what eternal life would be if it meant being forever without God, torture that never ended. So for me, heaven, I think, is a means to an end. It's not the end in itself. And what is the end? What's the prize? Not a gold medal ceremony and a two-minute moment of glory, but it is God Himself is the prize for a Christian. God is the prize we are seeking, because there we're told we'll know Him perfectly. I hate to point people out, but Carlin got it, talked about the relationship with Jesus. That relationship will be perfect in heaven. St Paul says, no more looking through a glass darkly or through an imperfect reflection as in a mirror, With then we will know Him fully, even as we are fully known. 
Now, I got my friend Bishop Mark. I was glad to have his little thing on the end of the video there. And I put him at the end, not because he has like rank, because he's the bishop or something, but because I loved his answer. It was directly, he said, the goal of the Christian faith is to fall in love with God through Jesus Christ. It's about the relationship ever unfolding. And that's what heaven will be like for us, that knowing God completely. Because I think we have to be a bit careful of that, the way we talk about what we get from being Christian, about heaven like the, as the reward that we get for being Christian. Because if we think of it like a marriage, you don't fall in love with someone and then marry them so that you can get their stuff. Well, some people do. It doesn't work very well, is it? It's not the way it's meant to work. You promise to have to take them to be yours completely and to give yourself to them completely, to have and to hold, not to have their stuff. You don't marry someone to get the prize. They are the prize. I wonder if we sometimes treat God that way. Are we in a relationship with Him so that we can get His stuff? Do we think once we have eternal life, once we're in the, like I said, in the pearly gates, then, then God won't matter anymore? Like it's a, like heaven's some sort of get out of hell free card and then we can discard God and it doesn't matter so much? For a Christian, I believe that God Himself is the prize. The goal, yes, is to get to heaven, but why? To be with God completely, forever. And I think actually, I don't have any proof of this, but I think people in the past might have had a little better understanding of this than we do now. And I, the reason I say that is because I think they spent more time going to find God where we know He can be found, trying to work on that relationship, learn more about Him. So when we say to people to spend time in their Bibles, it's not as a, like, you have to do this, or you have to do it to get some sort of prize, but here is where you get to know God as He has revealed Himself in Jesus Christ. That's where He's to be found. So if you want to fo- if you want focus... And to know about what the prize is in your race of faith, don't think about where you're going, think about who you are going to. And then as I sat down to think about this, I thought, you know what, what I find even better, even more comforting, even more amazing, is that in God's great plan, with everything that He knows, and everything that He possesses, and everything that He is, do you know what the prize is for God? It's us. You and I are His prize that He fought so hard to win. The cross of Jesus and the empty tomb show us just how much He was willing to give, show just how hard He was willing to fight to win us back to Himself. So this is our goal. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Or maybe if I can paraphrase, seek first God and His righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you as well. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus.